Hey guys, welcome to the 13th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the for and the for each loop. And a loop is just something that will allow us to loop through the same code over and over. So, all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button. And once you have it on your form, just go ahead and double click on it. Alright, so first we're going to be looking at the for loop. So, to create a for loop, you're just going to want to type for. And then following that, you're going to want to have two parentheses. Now, the for loop is composed of three statements. The first statement is executed first, and it's only executed once. So typically, people define variables inside of here. So we're just going to go ahead and type int i equals 0. So now we can use this integer that we created inside of our for loop and only inside of our for loop. All right, and next comes a conditional statement. And basically what it's going to do is, before it loops each time, it's going to check this conditional statement. And if it returns true, then it's going to proceed through the for loop and loop again. But if it returns false, it's just going to stop executing and never loop through again. So we're going to say, while i is less than 5, and then the third um, statement is executed after it loops through. And what we're going to do here is just have it increment i by 1. So we're just going to do i++. Plus plus. And then we're just going to want to put two curly braces. And inside of these two curly braces is basically the code that it will loop through. Alright, so let me explain this a little bit more. So basically what it's going to do is just create integer i. Then it's going to check to see if i is less than 5. And since i is equal to 0 right off the bat, um, then 0, of course, is less than 5. Then it's going to go through and do the code inside of here. Then after it's done executing all this code, it's going to go up here and add 1 to i. Then after it does this, it's going to go ahead and check this conditional statement again. And then i will be um, 1, and of course 1 is less than 5, so it's going to go ahead and loop through this code again. And it's just going to repeat that process over and over until i is not less than 5. And so once i is equal to 5, it's going to stop executing. So basically what it's going to do right here is loop through this code five times. So we're just going to have it loop through this code right here. We're just going to have a message box show. So we're just going to say message box show, and we're just going to make it say hello, and then we're just going to add i onto that. So plus i dot two string. So what it's going to do here is just going to loop through, create i, check to see if i is less than five. First off, it'll be zero. So of course, zero is less than five. It's going to go through and execute this code. So we're going to get hello. We're going to get a message box that says hello. And then it's going to say um, hello zero. And then it's just going to loop through again. And then we'll get hello one, hello two, hello three, and so on. All right, so let's just go ahead and make sure that this works here. We get hello zero, hello one, hello two, hello three, and hello four. All right, so just loop through that code five times. And you can put any code inside of here that you would like. All right, and something else people might want to do is if you ever want to make it so that your um, loop is infinite, meaning that it will never end, you can just get rid of the conditional statement right here. So if it has nothing to check, it's just going to, of course, loop over and over again, making it um, unstoppable. It's just going to keep doing it over and over. So if we do hello, we get hello zero, hello one, hello two, hello three, and we can just keep looking at forever and it will never end. So yeah, we're at 45 right now. So I'm just going to stop executing by clicking F6. And it'll ask me if I want to stop debugging. And of course, I want to stop debugging. All right. So that's pretty much all there is on the for loop. So next, we're going to go to the for each loop. And the for each loop basically allows you to loop through every element inside of an array. So if we were to go right here and just create a string array, I'll just call it names. Let's set it equal to... Um, a bunch of strings. So we're just going to have Adam, Bob, and Joe. Um, all right. So now we're going to create a for each statement or a for each loop to loop through every single string inside of the string array right here. So we're going to say for each, and then we're going to want to put two parentheses, and then we're going to want to say for each string s in names. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to go through every single string inside of the string array. So it says for each string, and then it calls it s, in this names array right here, then it's just going to loop through this code. 
and every time it loops through, it's basically going to set this string called s equal to something different. So the first time it loops through, s is going to be equal to this element right here. The next time it loops through, s is going to be equal to this element, and so on. So basically what we can do right here is just have a message box show s. And what it will do is it will go through every single element inside of this array and print it out inside of a message box. So we should get a message box for each uh, element inside of this array right here. So we should get one for Adam, Bob, and Joe. Perfect. And you can do this with any collection or any array. So if you wanted to, you could do this with a list as well. So if we were to go right here and create a list of integers, I guess, and I'll just call it numbers and obviously set it equal to a new list of integers. I'll just add a few uh, numbers to my list. I'll add oops, numbers um, dot add, I'll add 5, and then I'll add 10 and 15. So numbers dot add, and then 15. Alright, so inside of our numbers list right here, we just have um, uh, three numbers. We have 5, 10, and 15. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to say for each integer called i inside of that numbers list right there, then basically we, what we just wanted to do is print it out inside of a message box. So we're just going to say i dot two string inside of this message box. So it's just going to go through every single number inside of this list and have a message box be displayed for it. So it's just going to go through five, and then we're going to get a message box that says five. Then it's going to go through ten, and we're going to get a message box that says ten. And finally, it's going to hit fifteen, and we're going to get a message box that says fifteen. All right, so when we debug here, we should get um, 5, 10, and 15. All right, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial on the for and for each loop. So see you guys.